outage at in the fueling at the Loves. It is absolute chaos right now. So I just parked at this Loves. I pulled in so I could use the bathroom and grab a coffee real quick. And I didn't really need to stop, but I was like, well, I really want a coffee for a little bit later. So I'll grab it now since I'm right by this Loves and I, I had no way of knowing. I backed into a spot, there were a number of spots open and then I heard an announcement as I was washing my hands that they said the fuel uh, fuel pumps are, are good to go again, something like that. Well, I got my coffee, I came outside and this is what's going on right now. There's just a huge backup. Those are the trucks that are trying to come in. This guy is trying to leave. He's a couple trucks over from me trucks are backed up at the fuel island I'm not sure if there's enough room see this guy's came around from the front of the fuel island apparently I'm not sure if there's enough room if I could go to my left if I could flip around but it's it's chaos in here and these are the kinds of things that can delay you for 20 minutes or so at least and you have no control over it so well, at least a couple people are getting out that's a good sign <laughs> I don't know how long I'm gonna be stuck here Good morning from Denver. I hope you can hear me over the little bit of wind noise. I haven't spent much time in Denver, but what I can tell you from the time I have spent here is that it is very much a non-truck friendly city. It's very congested. The environments that are available for trucks are very limited, very tight, and often require payment, and they're very dirty for the most part. I did stay at the Sat Brothers recently, and that wasn't too bad. Whew, this thin air gets me every time. I just was thinking about how crazy it is that, I mean, I, I'd be thinking about this every day. How crazy it is that these cities depend so much on all of the labor that truck drivers do, and yet the facilities, the, the infrastructure, everything that we need in order to do our jobs is not only not available, but it's as if they create the environments intentionally to be inhospitable to drivers. And it makes me think that the only way that it would change is if there was some bipartisan effort toward actual spending on infrastructure that would benefit truck drivers, which would benefit the economy, benefit consumers. But that would make way too much sense. And let's face it, there are too many lobbyists filling too many pockets on all sides to ever do anything that would be rational and helpful to the working people of this country. So, you know, what are you going to do but just be annoyed about it and try not to hit anything while you're driving through the most congested places you can possibly move a semi, you know? Anyway, uh, good morning to you. It's a nice morning and I hope you're having a good day, whatever you're doing. Hello again. I am still in Denver and I can never stop drinking water while I'm in Denver because the air is so dry and it's so hard for me to adjust to. Uh-oh, is this guy coming out here to... Nope, I guess not. I don't know what's going on. I did not put my wheel chalk in between the wheels and that's what he's doing. Dang it. Now I'm gonna apologize. <laughs> Sorry about that. What? Forgot to chalk the wheels. Oh, that's not your job, that's my job. Oh, okay, that makes you feel better. <laughs> that's my job. All right, cool. <laughs> Some 
very tattooed people. I've been thinking about making a video talking about my tattoos at some point, but that doesn't fit at all with trucking, but just as a fun aside, and I have, fortunately for me, my tattoos are by this really amazing artist that is now kind of impossible to get in with because she's sought after like around the world. It's crazy. But anyway, that's a whole aside here. Um, so yeah, I have news. I uh, have been pondering this for a while and it won't come as a huge surprise probably, but I'm going to be changing jobs again. One of the things about that that's funny is I've found that more often than not, people are pretty supportive. Fellow truck drivers, people who know the industry are pretty supportive when you change jobs on with some kind of frequency because I think a lot of them understand the reasons why you would change jobs. And also I think when you're a newer driver, you're trying to find your fit. You're trying to find what works well for you, what you want to do, what you enjoy, what you're willing to deal with and what you're not, all that kind of stuff. There, there are a variety of reasons why the company I'm at now is not a good fit for me. The underlying reason, which is the main motivator for most people, but isn't necessarily for me is money. Not making enough money for the, for what I'm doing as far as like running reefers, being over the road for a couple of weeks at a time. It just, it should be better than it is, I believe. And it's tough because it is a bad market. So it makes you second guess like, well, is it that bad or is it just the market that's bad right now? And should I wait it out? Well, there's a lot more to it than that. And you guys know, I, I will tell you some of the things I'm not happy about at a job, but I also really try not to like bad mouth or anything because it's not really the right thing to do. It's not the right way to be. I will say this, I've been working at a, at a very small company compared with the one that I came from and the one that I'm actually going back to. I'm going back to a company I worked at previously because it's the devil I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things I didn't love at that company and I'm kind of dreading dealing with that stuff again, but I'm familiar with it and here are a couple of kind of significant things and I'm sharing this in part for newer drivers or people who are just kind of getting into it. There's some real drawbacks of working for a large carrier and there's also drawbacks of working for smaller carriers. You know, you have to dip your toes in and find out that's the only way to do it, which does force you to change jobs unless you're the kind of person that is just willing to self-flagellate, and I am not. I used to have this for a long time, literally for years. I had this pattern of staying at jobs where I was really unhappy, where there was no potential for growth for me. I was just kind of in a state of paralysis, which was in large part due to other factors in my life that I wasn't addressing. And I think since I got over the hump of like, you know, pushing through fear and discomfort and uncertainty to go into something as difficult and sometimes scary and intimidating as trucking can be. Once I've, I got past that barrier, now I'm, I feel, I want to say like I feel unstoppable, but in some ways I do. I feel like if you can get through getting a CDL and if you can then get through your first year of trucking without anything really terrible happening and you can tolerate the unbelievable amounts of bullshit that you deal with in the trucking industry, with trucking companies, with being out here on the road, the congestion, the lack of parking, the total unethical treatment of truckers as a labor force in our country. If you can withstand that and keep a smile on your face as much as I have, I'm kind of unstoppable. <laughs> I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of a bad bitch. <laughs> That goes for you too, if you're watching this, and whether you're a guy or girl, you're a bad bitch too if you put up with all this shit. Man, it's it's wild. But yeah, the, the negative of the company that I'm at, or like just, I think a, oof, sorry, I just saw a gorgeous Peterbilt with like this really pretty purple, deep like indigo purple paint job. Oof, I like that. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I think, a, a big drawback that you can experience at a smaller company is the lack of support and especially because the market is so bad so what goes first you know they they have a, a skeleton crew basically where I'm at and it's interesting because one of my buddies works for a company that is similar in size in terms of number of drivers but they have literally four times as many people on dispatch now I might have that wrong let's say three times maybe I'm not totally remembering everybody that we have in our support staff it's not enough you know it's like I know some of these small companies are kind of just barely hanging on because of the economy and the market and it's really tough so I don't totally like hate on them for not having enough 
support staff, but I also am like not willing to tolerate it when I can't get basic information. I've had multiple instances of trying to get information that I needed after hours and getting just for making a phone call and politely expressing, hey, I need to know X, getting complete attitude served back at me. And I'm like, um, I'm trying to be proactive and get information that I absolutely need in order to do my job for you, for your company, for this company to make money. And you're giving me an attitude because you have to open a laptop because that's literally what the attitude was about. <laughs> On more than one occasion, the same thing. I think it was the same person. I was like, wow. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that I have a very low tolerance for because, and any of us should because our jobs are really hard, really just trying. Like the average American could never fucking hang in the trucking world, just straight up. <laughs> The, the people that throw fits on airplanes and the same people that, you know, stomp their feet and get all mad when they can't get what they want in the grocery store. If they had to experience like one day of what we go through in this work, they would fucking be like sitting on the floor crying. Like, no. <laughs> so if you can't uh, handle answering the phone, but also in fairness to people who have that kind of response when they get phone calls, um, I think a lot of times the reason people react that way is because they are so overloaded that they just can't handle one more phone call. And I'm, I'm totally, you know, speculating. I don't know what the real deal is. All I know is that it shouldn't be like that. As a driver, you shouldn't feel like people are treating you like a burden when you're trying to do your job. And it's not like, you know, you're calling asking ridiculous questions. It's like you're, you're like, hey, um, I am usually getting up at four in the morning to head out and it's now 6 p.m. and I don't have a dispatch. I'm just calling to check on that. That's that's a simple, very straightforward and reasonable request. So uh, the company I was at before, some of the things I didn't like that I'm not looking forward to, it's it's a trading company, so it's pretty micromanagey. I'm not talking about Schneider, by the way. Um, I did consider, I looked into the Schneider tanker program and the pay was an insult. And uh, I've heard uh, so the pay on some other Schneider accounts and the pay is an insult. And I think that's really disgusting. And I think that's part of what all of us should be really like up in arms about as truck drivers is these mega carriers. They are the reason why we all struggle to make money. I mean, it's obviously a huge, there's a lot of other factors there. These companies drive down rates because they undercut everybody because they can afford to. That is why a company the size of the one I'm at now struggles so much and why they have what's basically a skeleton crew. And overall, I can't say too many terrible things. This company's not terrible. Other things though that I don't like about it, sorry, I'm, I'm bouncing back and forth. Um, I'll go back to what I was just saying a minute ago, but I don't want to do reefer. I realized I don't want to do reefer and I kind of knew that that wasn't going to be something I would want to do long term, but uh, reefer, the sitting, the just too much sitting, it's really hard on my body. So I'm taking a big leap and I'm getting into flatbed and I don't know if it'll work out. I'm open to whatever happens. Maybe it won't. You know, I tried it before. I loved it, but my body had some issues with it, but the circumstances at that time were really different. So I am going to wait and see if it's if it's a different scenario this time with different training, different options in terms of whether I'm going to be doing tarping or whether I'm going to run curtain side. I haven't decided that yet and I'm going to wait and see. The other thing I don't like about running reefer, a couple of things. One, dealing with food companies. They make you wait. They use lumpers. There's all these things that really end up screwing over the driver that I don't enjoy dealing with. A lot of it sucks your time away and I think it makes way more sense to do reefer if you're an owner operator because you're making more money on those loads and you can maybe afford to sit a little bit longer or at least in a better economy you can I know it's hard for all of the owner operators right now but if you're a company driver you're you're just getting mileage pay and you know one of the things these companies love to do that I've discovered is well they know how long they can wait before they start loading or offloading you because they will start to have to pay detention to your company after a certain period of time and usually that's two hours so they'll just they'll use up that whole two hours so you as a driver are losing two hours of your day where you're just a hostage and you're in a, a shipper and you're, you can't do anything you're just stuck in your truck so that's crappy one last thing I really don't like about running reefers that I, I kind of already had a window into from things I was told is I 
don't feel good about the environments that I go into, especially in like meat processing. Um, those are things I have to work out within myself of like, well, if you're going to consume animal products, you should be willing to confront like face to face some of the, the impacts of that. So when you go into this disgusting smelling uh, chicken plant in Texas and you can't even imagine how bad it actually smells inside the building because you can smell it for a block all around it or whatever. I don't want to participate in that. It just, it, and that's just me. I'm, I know some people don't even think about that stuff as drivers, but it, I can't not think about it. I've read way too much <laughs> and I, I feel like I know too much. So the flatbed thing, the company I'm going back to, the trucks are governed at 65. I'm governed at 70 currently. That kind of sucks in terms of getting miles and getting to where you need to go and like ease of getting around people sometimes when you need to. But then there's also the other side of that is when you're governed at 70, you have to constantly be passing people or deciding not to pass people and hang back and that can almost be more annoying. So at least if you're, if you're stuck at 65, you just hang out in the right lane and let people pass you. It is what it is. You know, it's not great, but whatever. The other thing I really don't like is this company has inward facing cameras with audio and I understand why they do that, but I think the audio part is unnecessary and intrusive. I don't like it. I think it's a violation of privacy. It's not like someone's watching you 24 hours a day. If you mind your P's and Q's and do what you're supposed to be doing, you're gonna be okay. So uh, rolling stops are a no, <laughs> as they should be in a truck. Um, I'm excited about their training program for flatbed. I really like the people I've spoken to in the flatbed division. And I like the fact that there are different options within flatbed. And I also really like the, the fact that they do training for oversized loads and different types of loads that are, are not like, there's some type of acronym for it. I don't remember what it is, but you guys know, if you've been watching me, you know, I get a little geeked about oversized loads. I just think that stuff is kind of cool. And I love the idea of learning new things and being challenged in trucking. And that kind of is a bigger, you know, point, like a bullet point for me of like, wanting to do more physical work. I love doing physical work. I really enjoyed the experience and the challenge of securing different loads, the climbing. It's, I'm going to be a spider woman climbing around these loads. I just, I just like all that about it. There's a sick twisted part of me that likes the idea of getting sweaty and being out in the elements. And it just, it's kind of, uh, it's stimulating in ways that dry van and reefer are not. Dry van and reefer just feel like I'm just withering. <laughs> it's killing me. But um, I got up today at 2.15. I had to deliver. I was still a couple hours from my delivery. I had to deliver at 6 a.m. And every time, literally every time I do that, where I get up at like 2 or 2.30, I'm always like, oh, why don't I do this all the time? Start driving by like 3.30 or 4. It's so much lower stress, man. And it, it does suck to go to bed when the sun's still up, but you just pull your curtains. You're tired enough because you've been driving and you've been up for that many hours. It's way lower stress to be on the roads when there aren't that many people on the road. It's great. And I this was a place that I had shown, that I the place I dropped off at this morning, I had shown in a recent video, like two videos ago or something, where it was really congested and I was saying how it's gonna take forever to get in and out of there and like, some truck hit another truck while I was in there. It was, it's really tight. And I was the first person to sign in this morning because I think they start at 6 a.m. And I got there at like 5.40 and I got right in my door and it was a lumber load so it took a while but I didn't really mind. It's just so much easier to get in there. So that was really cool. But um, that's pretty much it. So yeah, I guess just one more thing I'll say is I've, I've gotten some negative feedback at times about you know, changing jobs and someone, <laughs> this still makes me laugh when I think about it. Some guy wrote a message that was like complaining about being disloyal because you left a job. And it's like, listen to me, I'm talking to you, my viewers, my fine viewers, or people who are new in trucking or thinking about it. Uh, there is no loyalty in trucking. And furthermore, there's no loyalty in capitalism, man. This is about your bottom line. Trucking companies don't give a fuck about you. Trucking companies see you as your unit number. That is all you are. They only care about you insofar as you are able to get up and operate that vehicle in a safe and timely fashion and get to your pickups and deliveries when you're supposed to without any types of safety violations or DOT issues or anything like that. that that's it. It does not matter. So if you're
you're not making the money that you need to make, if you're not feeling adequately supported while you're out here doing a dangerous, high stress job, then you owe it to yourself to, to walk away and go into something that serves you better. Because, yeah, why do that to yourself? It doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, I'm, um, I'm feeling optimistic. I'm ready for a change. I'm looking forward to the devil I know. <laughs> There's a, a bunch of upsides, you know. Um, I will say just one last thing before I, I let this long video go. Gosh, it's getting so long. That company I'm going back to has excellent support 24 hours a day. There's always somebody answering the phone. I've had moments where I, I reached someone on the phone that wasn't that helpful. That happens, but overall they're very good. And they have their app, their company app is so good. And it's so useful and just... The things that they have in place, there are some things that they had that were sucky, which from what I heard, they have improved like their tablet and their um, navigation was not great when I was there, but I think they have worked on that since. The other thing is I'm gonna have to run east and I'm not looking forward to that, but you know what I said to myself? Uh, I've been driving now, I've been trucking for close to a year and a half. I have a lot more confidence than I used to before. I'm, I'm much better at maneuvering a truck and I am a little bit smarter <laughs> about planning ahead so I think I can handle it you know yeah I, I'm I know there's a very good chance I could find myself in New York City at some point because I know they run there but the nice thing about flatbed is they don't generally go into the cities as much a lot of the places that they deliver to or pick up from are going to be on the outskirts so that's that's a positive so I'm sure I will be updating you guys more as time goes on, but I'm uh, I'm really excited to change it up, and um, I don't feel the least bit bad about it. You gotta look out for number one in this industry, you really do. So, thanks for watching, and I will keep you updated, and I will catch you on the next one.